Good morning and welcome to the Business Spotlight. I am so excited to have Stephen here today. Good morning, Stephen. How are you? Good morning, Tony. I'm doing great. How are awesome. you? I'm doing good. Doing really good. I'm enjoying this extra heat. It gives me excuses to jump in the pool. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let me ask you this question. What do you do and, and how long have you been doing this? Sure, so um, I am the owner of a company called Sunshine Designs. We're a digital marketing website development um, agency. Uh, I've owned the business for 23 years. Wow, um, I don't think you're old enough to own the business for 23 years. You look young. I'm fairly young. That's awesome, I love that. I'm older than I look. But <laughs> well, that'll play it, you know. I'm kind of showing it, how old I am. The, the beard, the beard keeps uh, helps the age come up a little bit or down, whichever <laughs> way you want to look at it. But um, okay. yeah, we, we uh, primarily, for, you know, um, we've been in business for 23 years. Um, we our core business is developing websites. Um, okay. We started focusing um, more in the last three to four years on non for profits. Um, oh, okay. I have traditionally focused on small businesses. Um, I, being a small business, um, as I started the, the organization, um, I look towards a remote type environment. I know that's nothing new to this current you know, day and age, but back then that was a really new concept. Um, yeah. And so, you know, looking at how folks work from um, a small business perspective, the types of things they need marketing wise, how they look at their business structure, um, how their business fun, you know, functions, how to make them grow the revenue um, and solve other problems, not just marketing problems, but other problems internally. We, we really have dug into that kind of perspective for small businesses. And now we've kind of branched towards not-for-profits because that's really where my love is, you know? Okay. So why do you have this love for non-for-profit? I'm really excited, um, interested to hear about that. So um, I've been on multitudes of different boards. Um, as, as my fiance says, my love language is helping people. Um, and so I find that um, looking at something that actually makes sense. When I, when I, I've worked for other advertising agencies when I, when I was you know, first starting out, um, I don't necessarily like that type of grind, if you will, right. um, why we're focused on growing those businesses, why, why they, they have certain deadlines. Okay. Although I appreciate them. We work with deadlines, we work with, you know, you know, real scenarios, but yeah. not-for-profits are doing something to help other people. Um, and their survivability is what I really can truly appreciate. Um, to give you an example, um, some of the non-for-profits that we've recently helped, one of them was um, not doing so hot last year at this time. Um, we were able to help with our team and, and, and invigorating the internal organization of that, that space to now have enough revenue to survive for one year if they didn't do anything. So really helping them turn turn their focus around, look at how, look at things differently. Um, we were able to do some of those things because of a program. So like as traditional agencies, you're probably aware, you know, you know price wise, we do 50% up front, 50% at the end of project, or they do a retainer. Um, we took a different perspective. Um, we started doing a subscri subscription based model Oh, wow. uh, and rebranded it as a different brand. Um, the brand that we work with is called Blue Rooster Web. And I'll talk a little bit more about that. But essentially, we build a website, host it, SSL, market it, um, help them a little bit with social media, um, unlimited changes on their site for $100 a month. Or if they've e-commerce, $147 a month. Or if it's a little bit bigger, you know, $200 or, um, you know, $299 a month. Mm -hmm. And we've designed it around that because... We, we realized that most small businesses cannot afford a three to five to $10,000 website. Right. And they deserve to have a three to four, five to $10,000 website because the graphics, the time, the coding. And so since I already own my own hosting platform, I own all the our stuff. We do all of our staff's internal. We're all US based. I was able to change the perspective how to do business and offer this to clients. And we've from our perspective, done great work. Um, just because we we have you know hundreds and hundreds of clients in our portfolio that are in that platform, um, it's something scalable and it allows any size businesses and mid sized to small business to be able to afford the luxuries of what a large business can have. I love that. That is just awesome. 
Yeah. So I know you said earlier that, you know, you had done things virtually. Did the change in the economy uh, affect your business at all and what you were doing? Because I know you said you were originally working through the virtual thing, but was there a change? Um, it actually was a very positive change. Okay. Um, in, in, in 2001, remote computing wasn't even a thought, especially for advertisers. Um, you know, when you look at, um, you look at what's involved in time tracking, when you look at what's involved with managing employees and contractors and clients, that's a big lift back then. Um, we, cr I created our own system to manage some of that. We didn't do everything through video. That was a very new thing, you know, the last, you know, 10 years. Um, but as people started looking at problems with, um, dealing with the pandemic, for example, you know, there was a Navy company that hired us to build virtual platforms for pharmaceutical companies. So instead of them coming to like convention center in downtown Tampa, we would create that environment virtually where they walk in and use virtual kiosks and have set up and all the you know, the rooms that they need to go to. And the That's AV awesome. company would do the live broadcast through Zoom and build that event mm -hmm. virtually, right? Mm -hmm. um, we, um, I'm very involved with Boy Scouts of America. Um, and nice. so the, we've created a platform for, the boy, for, for our groups in the Boy Scouts allow us to continue to provide the experience they were looking for. Um, I know it's not as hands-on because of the pandemic, but we were able to get every one of our troops and Cub Scouts through the next level through that time period and grew our group, which was impressive. That is so great. So, I mean, it was, and those are just two examples. I mean, there's umpteen more examples, but looking at things differently right. um, and being able to solve a challenge that's there and allow us to have that opportunity to grow, but also allow them to continue to exist. Mm -hmm. And so um, even non for profits we help them maintain their, their ability to receive grant money, even mm -hmm. though they have people in, in physically there. We were able to help folks do a lot of things that they would normally do that they couldn't normally do um, and saved a lot of businesses during that time, to be frank. What a great story. Absolutely love that. What would you say would be one of the biggest learnings um, as a business owner? I think a lot of folks, when they start a business, they think they're going to get rich or advocate. That always makes me laugh. Um, it makes me chuckle. They they don't realize the time and dedication it requires. They also don't require the education it requires. Um, I have a bachelor's in, in fine arts. Um, by no means when I started this business did I understand tax code. Um, did I understand how certain financial aspects worked? I was an artist. I wanted to draw, I would draw, create, graphic design stuff, own some tech, and have some fun. And a lot of folks, you know, it doesn't matter what their, their service they're providing. I don't think they realize right out of the gate all the pieces that are involved with starting a business and creating that business and making it, making it sustainable. And that's why, you know, you statistically three to five years, you know, most businesses fail. They're not ready for that commitment and understanding and learning um, and realize that they may not have as much time with everybody else when they're doing that. Um, and that, that's a huge impact for most folks. Yeah. I love that. Um, do you have any upcoming events that you'd love to share with our audience? We don't have any recent or upcoming events. Um, we do have, um, our platform that we just launched, uh, when it oh, comes to dealing with, uh, non-for-profits, um, we are, pairing up our, our subscription-based product um, that we do for nonprofits, which is $147.99 a month. Um, and most of them have e-commerce pieces. So it allows us to build that website and do you know, all the things I described before. Mm -hmm. But we're adding in another feature to it um, where we're gonna build our services as a subscription-based model and not mm -hmm. as an hourly-based model. Okay. So like for a not-for-profit that needs like a couple, you know, have like a part-time staff person or someone to help them reorganize their, their organization, um, build that digital transformation that they need, our base price is, is $750 a month. Um, okay. And, you know, it depends on where those organizations are in their life cycle, but a lot of, a lot of the folks that we've engaged have really taken to that mm -hmm. uh, because they're getting a lot of hours mm -hmm. and a lot of, um, a lot of our time yeah. to really help them get to where they need to go. Yeah, I love that. 
So how do folks get to your internet site? I want to make sure they're getting that information. So when it comes to our, our main site, it's sun, S-U-N, sign, S-I-G-N, designs, D-E-S-I-G-N-S dot -S com. And if, if they're a small business or they just need that little bump that we're talking about, our product as a service is blueroosterweb.com, B-L-U-E, Rooster Web. Great. Good deal. So I got to ask you, Steve, what keeps you motivated? What keeps you inspired? Keeps me inspired. Um, my family. Um, my oldest son does work for me. Um, that's oh, not going to be cool. his career path, at least as, as far as I understand. Um, <laughs> but my family. Um, I'm deeply devoted to family. I honestly started a business so I could help my parents, you know, through their their older periods of time. Um, yeah. My mother gave me the liberty of having, uh, you know, ability to, when I came home from school that she was there when I came from school. Yeah. Um, I like the flexibility that I get now. Yeah. And that's what keeps me inspired. You know, whether I'm coaching or whether I'm, you know, helping the kids with something or, you know, we need to go someplace. I mean, that's that's what drives it. And of course, the other part is why it's about helping people. You know, watching watching folks grow, watching businesses grow, seeing people succeed, um, having them come back and go, thank you. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I, we were ta I was at a meeting. I had a, had a a woman literally in tears. She was so happy. So, you know, those are the things keeping me. They make a big difference helping mm -hmm. people. I love that. I really do yeah. love it. Steven, this is Stephen Powell. I'm Tony Tono with Business uh, Spotlight. I want to thank everyone for being here and uh, we'll see you on the next episode. So have a great day. See you. Thank you.